Hi guys. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Um, I just wanted to come on here because I really, the Lord has put it in my heart to share this testimony and it's going to be a big one. Praise the Lord. It's amazing. This video is to encourage all my brothers and sisters who street preach. And if you're a street preacher, you can share this because this is evidence. I am living evidence that street preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ are extremely important to the kingdom of God. If it wasn't for a street preacher, the obedience of a street preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I would not be saved today. I would not be saved and I would not be making this video. Jesus Christ saved me. My name's Diana and I was saved last year. The Lord has put it in my heart to come on here and encourage everyone who street preaches and to let you know that more Christians should be doing this because my testimony is crazy. So last year in December, um, I one day woke up with the urge to go to Sydney, Australia. I, I, I don't go on holidays, people. Like, I don't go on holidays. So I woke up with this urge to go to Sydney. I knew I had, I had to be there. I had to go there, right? So I wake up and I'm like, I need to go to Sydney. So I book a holiday for five days. I go with my sister and my best friend. I live in Australia. I live in Australia, but I don't live in Sydney. So on my second day of going to Sydney, right? I'm walking through the city and there's this man with his little church and he's just preaching on the top of his lungs handing out tracts talking about jesus and saying about jesus christ died for your sins and um you know he rose again preaching the gospel you must repent and everyone was walking past pastor simon shout out to you god bless pastor simon God bless you, Pastor Simon. If it wasn't for you, Pastor Simon, I would not even be saved today. And like, I will always be grateful for the rest of my life that he was obedient to the Lord and that he went out there and preached the gospel. So God bless you, Pastor Simon, because like, I will forever be grateful that Jesus saved me and he used you to preach the gospel. And how, what a mighty man of God and what, a, what mighty obedience to go out there despite everyone teasing you and laughing at you but you continue to preach so to all the street preachers i just want to let you know that what you're doing is correct even if no one everyone's ignoring you and you think oh wow no one's getting saved like no continue to strive because jesus christ used the street preacher to save me and this is a legit story me and my best friend she was also saved so two souls were saved anyways I was there walking past him and he was preaching about Jesus and everyone was ignoring him man. Everyone was walking past and instantly I was drawn like a magnet. I knew, I knew, I was like that's the, that's the Lord, the voice of the Lord. Not, not Pastor Simon but the gospel was the Lord and you know the Bible says my sheep hear my voice. I'm telling you, I'm telling you that day I heard the Lord. That day I heard the Lord calling me and I'm coming on here to encourage everyone and for all of you who say that street preaching it doesn't work yeah it works and more christians need to be out there spreading that fire because i'm telling you if you guys think i'm on fire for god i was saved by a street preacher that's what this is about and he gave me a tract and i will never forget the tract it said it said jesus loves you it was a blue track and it said jesus loves you heaven or hell Jesus loves you, heaven or hell. That's what it said. Whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. And instantly, instantly, I repented on the spot. I was like to him, can you pray for me, please? We accepted Jesus. I, I smoked cigarettes. I gave him my pack of cigarettes. I was like so convicted. I was like, take my cigarettes off me. Like, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I said, I know I'm living in sin. I'm living in sin. I need to repent. I need to repent of my sin, of my fornication. I repented. I was in a relationship. I ended it. 
because I knew it wasn't serving the Lord. This is the honest truth, peoples. I'm a 24 year old person and I got saved by Jesus and through a street preacher. So God bless the street preachers. Share this video because this needs to know, the people need to know this. Anyway, I'm not embarrassed. It's my faith. I'm not embarrassed. I'm unashamed. All Christians should be unashamed of the gospel of Christ. My testimony is crazy. My testimony, my testimony is another level. God, glory to God, glory to Jesus. Anyway, I got saved on the street in Sydney. There's a video of it. It was recorded live. There's a video of me being saved. Pastor Simon was live on his phone at the time. <laughs> so there's a video of me being saved. Like this is real talk. Anyway, so I was saved by the street preacher. Everyone was ignoring him, just walking by, laughing. Street preachers get it hard, man. They get it hard. They're frontliner. They're frontliners. They they're soldiers for Christ. Anyway, I heard the preaching. I repented on the spot. I accepted Christ. I was saved. And then the next day, I went to the church service. And then the next day I was baptized in the river as an adult willing to make my decision because I was baptized also as a baby. Okay, I had a baby baptism, an orthodox baby baptism. But for me, that didn't count because I didn't know what I was doing and I couldn't, just because you're baptized as a baby, you can go and live your life however you want. It doesn't mean you're getting to heaven because you are baptized as a baby. I was not getting to heaven just because I was baptized as a baby. That doesn't mean you're saved. Baptism doesn't mean you're saved. So I chose to be baptized as an adult with a mind that I can make my own decision and the decision to follow Jesus Christ. So I made the decision to be a Christian. I made the de decision to publicly declare my faith through baptism as an adult um, and to declare that I am a part of the kingdom and I'm dying to myself and I'm born again in Christ. And I made that decision as an adult. You know, Jesus was baptized at 30 years old. So, you know, I like to look at Jeez, the way Jesus did it, I had an urge to be baptized straight away. I was like, Pastor Simon said, have you been baptized? And I was like, I want, I said, can you baptize me, please? I, I need to be baptized. I said, I want it. I want to be baptized. So I had a desire after I was saved straight up to be baptized in water. I knew. Street preachers are obedient kingdom workers and they, they, to everyone who thinks that they don't work, well, they don't know because I'm living testimony that street preachers are used by God to bring people to the kingdom. If it wasn't for street preacher, my soul would be on its way to hell perishing. So I am forever grateful. I just wanted to say that when I got back from this holiday in Sydney, I started reading the, the Bible and then it all came to light to life and I understood that Jesus Christ is the Son of God that he, he he is God in the flesh that he died for our sins and that literally we are sinners and I had to humble myself to realize that I am a sinner in need of a savior I actually had to humble myself and know that the way I was living was going against God my choices and me just living for myself um, you know we can choose that but we have to pay the price and you know the price is death and the price is hell so I had to humble myself and I had to repent of my sin turn away from my sin praise the Lord and I had to I had to turn from my sin and I had to actually live a righteous life and, and follow Jesus Christ I had to follow Jesus truly not in a fake way but I really had to be genuine about my my faith and I had to take him seriously and I had the fear of the Lord I pray for the fear of the Lord so when I repented I knew I, I changed I actually did a 180 from my sin and I began to live a righteous life following after Jesus after the example of Jesus to live holy and righteously and pure to not live a fake sinful life we have to fight the flesh daily we have to fight our flesh daily and we have to put our flesh into subjection we have to push the flesh down so the flesh wants what the flesh wants right the flesh wants to sin because it's a sinful flesh but our spirit we have to push down the flesh and we have to tell the flesh no you're not doing this and the more you feed the spirit by the word by praying by doing the th living righteous you feed your spirit man so your spirit man is now bigger than and more powerful than your flesh man and you continually it's like a, a continuous fight a continuous um 
they continually war the Bible says they war against each other and you need to be feeding the spirit so that the spirit is bigger than the flesh it's a consistent battle it's like how they say mind over matter like it's it's that for the for the worldly people it's like minds over matter okay but in this sense it's your spirit over your flesh so you're continually subject you 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 whip your flesh you whip your flesh down so to speak into subjection because your flesh wants to sin okay i want to use the example of cigarettes all right because i used to smoke and if you're a smoker you know it's a strong addiction my flesh is so strongly addicted to the nicotine it wants a cigarette it wants it so bad my flesh I have to mentally and through through the power of God whip my flesh into subjection and capture all thoughts captive and give them to the obedience to give them to God because if I don't capture my thoughts right and then feed my spirit because I know I'm not living for my flesh anymore I'm living to please the Lord I'm living a righteous life I just use the cigarette one for an example but it's the same with all sin with your, your fornication with your with your alcoholism with your lying with your everything whatever whatever your sin problem is your flesh wants to sin okay your body you want to sin you have a sinful nature but the spirit the flesh is weak but the spirit is willing so you have to be a warrior you can't take this lightly like it's not a joke we have to really put the flesh whip the flesh and keep the flesh down and have the flesh in obedience and submission to the spirit that lives inside of us because we now have the spirit of of god living inside of us the same spirit that raised christ from the dead is now inside of me isn't that cool isn't that cool huh that's crazy that is like that is i don't know what to say i i don't know what to say lord thank you jesus i don't know like i'm just i don't know like he knew us he formed me in my mother's womb and i'm fearfully and wonderfully made true testimony amen it's a real testimony listen listen a lot of Christians need to be more brave and courageous and be street preaching. We need to be bringing the church to the streets, bringing the gospel of Christ to the people because the sinners aren't going to come to church, guys. The sinners don't, they're not going to come to church to hear it. They don't care. They don't even know. They don't, we need to bring it to them and let them know if your friend if you if you saw your neighbor or your friend in a house and it was on fire wouldn't you want to go warn them and say excuse me your house is about to burn down and you're gonna die get out now wake up Christ died for you it was the one true sacrifice it was the one true sacrifice you don't need you don't need any more sacrifices he only had to die once he only had to die once the pure holy spotless sacrifice not like how they used to do it before in the, in the old covenant how they used to sacrifice animals every day for their sins no it's just one sacrifice and it paid for all the sins for past present and future one holy sacrifice one holy sacrifice that you that is a free gift for you it's a gift so you don't go to hell and burn if you don't accept your free the free why wouldn't you want to get right with god why wouldn't you want a free gift to know that you're going to heaven it's a free gift anyway the church needs to bring the gospel to the sinners and to the streets so this is why street preachers I was saved by a street preacher. Pastor Simon was preaching the gospel in Sydney, Australia, and I heard it and I repented on the street corner, crying and weeping. And I gave him my cigarettes and I said, These are bad. I was like, I was like, I was like, I love Jesus. I was like, I love Jesus. I said, I know of him. I know of him. And everyone else was ignoring it. Everyone else ignored the preaching of the gospel, and it's so sad because all those people are going to perish if they harden their hearts the bible says do not harden your heart it's in a day of rebellion and that day when i was in sydney i chose not to harden my heart and i heard his voice this is a holy spirit now talking guys for real, this is not me like i i can't i i get so overwhelmed like i get so overwhelmed by the spirit of the lord and that day i heard the gospel 
and I surrendered my life and I changed my life and I was born again in Christ and I was saved and now I live my life for Jesus Christ because I know that it's real and I know that this world is very temporary and I know that Jesus Christ is the way and this is my testimony and all the street preachers in the world God bless your soul and you the Lord wants you to keep doing it the Lord wants you to keep street preaching I'm telling you go out there and lift your voice shout it at the top of what he tells you in secret you shout it on the rooftops what he what the Lord tells you in the secret you shout it on the rooftops and oh my goodness praise the Lord praise the Lord everybody God bless you because the street more Christians this is the time this is the time you're gonna see this is the time where people need to be out in the street preaching the gospel to the sinners to the lost bring the church to the lost because they're not gonna come to the church stop we need to stop sitting in our churches in our little pews and thinking oh we just be nice to people and they're gonna get saved we're just gonna keep being nice no, we've got to tell them about their sin and we've got to tell them the truth. Because listen, I wasn't saved from someone just being nice. I was saved from someone telling me that I was a sinner and that I was on my way to hell. And that Jesus died for me and I heard his voice. Listen, the, right, the people that are ripe for harvest will hear it. They won't get offended at knowing that they're a sinner. They will be humble. They will humble, humble themselves because... I had to humble myself and I knew I was like, oh man, I must, I, I'm bad. I, I knew I was in sin. I'm not going to deny, I knew. The Bible's like a mirror. The gospel's a mirror. You got to look at yourself. Are you humble enough to look at your sin and accept that you're, you are not in right standing with God? Or are you going to be so prideful and think, I don't need God. You don't need the one who formed you, the one who created you. You don't need him. That's fine. You're gonna you can choose what you want to do, but you are not free of the consequence. You are not free of burning in the lake of fire for eternity. Do you know I had a dream? Do you know do you know God gave me a dream and he sent me to hell in my dream? I tell you, he gave me a choice. He said, This is what happens when you fornicate. And I'm not kidding, he gave me a dream. My spirit came out of my body and he sent me into hell. Listen, I was in a room and I was on a bed a little single bed and the it was like a jail cell and I was in this cell and I had felt eternity I God let me feel eternity I can't explain it to you on on I don't know how to explain it but when I was there I knew that I was there for billions of years it's like I knew and I felt the separation of God I I, I could feel that he couldn't hear me I was calling him in my dream and and screaming out and I knew I knew why I was there I knew it was because I chose to fornicate and I said I can't believe for, for, for minutes of pleasure I will let my soul end up in this place where he can no longer hear me there's no more chances there's no more it's gone he's gone and you're sitting there thinking you just gave up the most best thing for the most for a bowl of stew like Esau for five minutes you gave up your soul in heaven for five minutes I couldn't believe it in the this he took my spirit and then I came listen listen this is a, this dream scared me so much I broke up with my boyfriend we were together for two years I broke up with him when I was safe after I was safe I said I said we can't be together anymore I said this isn't serving the Lord I was like I'm not ready to marry you I said you're not a Christian I said we're unequally yoked I said I I'm sorry I, I can't I will not ever ever do that again I was like I'm not ending up in hell for that I'll tell you right now I'll tell you right now I'm not in I'm not, my soul's not burning for that all right and then do you want to know what scripture I read a few days later Psalm 139 listen to this a few days later after I had that dream I read Psalm 139 and it's oh if I make my bed in hell you will be there if I make my bed in hell I made my bed in hell and I the whole time I was thinking about God and how I what I did to him 
and how he doesn't hear me and you just sit and think about that in torment for eternity and that was the dream I had and I was in a bed in hell it was like a sick bed I, I was on a sick bed in hell a little single bed the walls were so high and I was crammed in like a jail cell and I can't explain it it was like oh I, I I feel what billions of years would feel like. It's like, it, 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 it's so weird. It's so weird what it's like, how your soul feels it. But I felt that. And when I woke up from that dream, man, did I know what he was trying to tell me. I was like, you're serious. And he's like, yeah, I'm serious. That's the verse. Praise the Lord. If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. That, I had a dream of that Praise the Lord And now he wants me to speak about it So this dream I had After I was saved And I was saved last year in December And man I realised you, you know if you're a fornicator you're going to hell If you're if, if, if you're a fornicator And you're engaging in sexual relations Before marriage you, As of now as of today you're on your way to hell you're, If you die tomorrow you're going to hell If you die you're going to hell it's the true facts. God doesn't like it. He doesn't accept it. His kingdom is very holy. There's no sin allowed. Not any sin is allowed near him. No sin is allowed in his vicinity. So you can't be bringing your fornication and thinking, oh, God understands. God knows my heart. God knows. God understands if every now and then I sleep. God, God, no, no, no. That's the Satan. God doesn't know. God knows. God doesn't. God's not like that. God's not an easygoing guy. That's like, oh, it's all good. You know, it's all good. Just you're all good. Like, it's all good, man. I, I know what it's like to be in the flesh. I know. That's the enemy. That's the enemy. Right? Seriously. There we go. This verse got me another verse. When I read this verse, I was shocked. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. That was me. And I was washed and I was saved and I was sanctified. And now I live a holy life. Because when you're truly saved, you desire to live holy. You desire to follow God and be righteous. You're not saved and then you just... That's not a real, real salvation when you're saved and you're still continually living in sin. You haven't been saved. If, you're, if you think you're saved and you're still swearing and, and gossiping continually, you're not saved. I don't know what you are. You're in denial. You're in living, I don't know what world you're living in, but you need to really take it more seriously because this is no joke. Salvation isn't, it's not a joke. Jesus, Jesus says in, it's, the Bible says in Hebrews, if you willfully sin after knowing the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for you. There remaineth no more sacrifice for you. So don't go on willfully sinning. Live a holy life. This is a very serious video. This is very serious. This isn't a joke. This isn't a joke. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remaineth a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Guys, hell is a real place. Hell is a real place and heaven is a real place. Heaven is a real place where you live and you and, and you do, you live there and you have a life there. It's a real place. It's not just this earth and then you die and it goes black. I heard the voice of the Lord. Oh my goodness. And you guys think that you lukewarm Christians, you lukewarms think, oh, that's a bit embarrassing to street preach. That's a bit weird. A bit weird. A bit weird. A bit weird. You sound like the people that, were, that, that thought Jesus was a bit weird as well. That sounds like you guys hanging out in the corner. Are you serious? I don't know why more people aren't out there in the street bringing the gospel, bringing the gospel of Christ to the sinners. Man, we, they need to hear it. We need to lift up our voice like a trumpet. 
We'll lift up our voice. There's a guy in Adelaide right now and he's preaching the gospel, right? He's in the street. God bless his soul. God bless everyone's soul who street preaches. I'm a living testimony of street preaching and how it works. Because if you think I'm on, I'm on fire for God. I love Jesus Christ. I am unashamed of the gospel of Christ. The Bible says that cowards don't make it into heaven. My life changed completely. When I became Christian, people hated me. I had people attacking me, telling me that I was that I was crazy, that I was an idiot, that I was a sinner, that how dare I, how dare I go and get baptized. I was attacked from the enemy, man. I was attacked. God came into my life like a flood, like a flood. And he transformed my heart from the inside out. He gave me a new heart, a new mind. I live righteous holiness. The devil is trying to drag all of you guys down to hell. And man, did I know this world was emptiness and Christ saved me and Christ came to set the captives free. I was set free of all of my trauma. An abusive household, an abusive relationship, when I was younger, I had an abusive relationship and it was very bad. And the Lord came to set me free. It was very bad and God set me free. Jesus Christ is the best psychologist I've ever seen. And guess what? The sessions are free. The sessions are free. <laughs> the sessions are free. He'll work through everything that's wrong with you and he'll purge you out and he'll give you a new mind and a new heart. And he'll do help you deal with all your issues that you had from your past life. Because therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Do you know, I, I, my life before Christ was so sad. It was so sad. If I share what I went through, it was so sad. And Jesus really was the only one who ever, ever cared and ever really helped me. It was Jesus the whole time. When I was, when I was being abused, Jesus was there. Even before I was saved, he had his eye on me. And it's so true when they say that sin, when other people sin on you and then they abuse you, it leads you to do sin and it's true. And this is why the enemy comes in and, and, and people are abused. Because when you're abused, you know, when you're abused, it leads you to do, to do more sin because you're so hurt. So you just live a life because you're trying to soothe your pain from all this all the hurt that was done to you so i was just like you know thinking i'll medicate myself with my sin but really the only one who can really come and medicate you and really heal you instead of just your way of putting a band-aid over your wounds is jesus christ is god he can come in and he will purely truly heal your soul only god can do that Everything else is a band-aid. You got to rip that band-aid off and let the Lord in and he'll come in and he'll transform you and he will make you a new creation. So all glory to God. Jesus saved me and praise the Lord everyone. This was a very emotional for me. Very emotional because I'm sharing my personal life on here, but I'm doing it because I want and I want people to see what God can do. And this is really what's in my heart as a human. As a human being on this earth, this is the real me and this is the real truth. So I don't really care. It's not embarrassing. It's just the truth. And, you know, this is what God did for me in my life and how he saved me through a street preacher. It's preaching the gospel of Christ. So all glory to the Lord. All glory to Jesus. And we must we must accept Christ. I pray that this, in, this, this, this plants some seeds because man, you, you don't understand. You, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time if you're not living for God. If you're not living for the one true God. If you're not spending your time serving the one true living God. Listen, before I go, I read this today in Hebrews. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Do you not know what that means? It's a fearful thing. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So praise the Lord, everybody. We really got to depart from evil because God is very holy and there's no sin allowed in his kingdom. And if you're sinning, 
and you're living in your sin, well, you're going to pay the price. And I feel very sorry. But anyway, praise the Lord, the street preachers got to rise up. I encourage everyone who street preaches the gospel of Christ to keep going because I was saved through a street preacher. And I'm telling you, there's souls out there. The great white harvest. How much do you love God? How much are you working for God? Because if you really love God, you'd be out there doing the great white harvest. Do you know why? Because my soul was so ripe for plucking that day and Pastor Simon was obedient to the Lord. I don't know what the Lord was telling him that day. The Lord told him, go here and preach. He's so obedient. Okay, Lord. He loves the Lord. He works for the Lord. And guess what? The Lord knew that day. She's going to be there. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love him. I love him. And he loves me. God bless you. Jesus is Lord. All glory to the one true living God that is alive. And the Bible is the active word of God. Jesus is alive and he is going to return. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And all glory and honor goes to him forever and ever and ever. Amen. In the kingdom of God, in the kingdom, they sing holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, right? He is so holy. Praise you, Lord. I know you can hear me, right? There's a great cloud of witnesses watching us and we've got to keep pushing forward the kingdom. Preach, my friends. Preach that gospel. Get out there. Shout on the rooftops. Shout your voice. Come on. Let's do it. Get up. Preach, guys. Preach the gospel of Christ. The truth. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Anyway, I'm signing out. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to you. Alright guys, thank you for watching my testimony. Share this video. In Jesus' name, bye.